Well, hello everyone and happy new year. Welcome, welcome to 2022 and welcome to how to be a trailblazing assistant. What a great way to kick off our new year. Come on in everybody. Where are you from? Illinois, Wisconsin, the UK, Mexico, Ohio, Germany, Canada. Come on in. I'm so excited to see all of you joining us and us kicking off this new year together. Well, I have to tell you, I am really pumped today. Um, maybe I had a little too much coffee, but I'm actually pumped because I'm just really excited about this topic. I am excited that we're starting a new year that I'm confident is going to be better than last year. I am putting it out there. Um, and in fact, speaking of that, I'd like you to come up with what's your word for this year. So my word for this year is thrive. And that's something I'm actually going to share with my team at Office Dynamics. Yesterday, I was talking to two of my favorite executive assistants um, in Columbus, Ohio at Nationwide Insurance, Sherry Veering and Brenda Mason. I love them. Talk about trailblazers. They're amazing. And they each came up with a word. So um, one of the words Brent, uh, Brenda chose, let's see, she said up, looking up, but then she told me this morning she changed her word to opportunities, that she wants to just seize and create all kinds of opportunities this year. Sherry's word was happy. She just really wants to be happy in her personal life, in her career, with her children. So intentional. Yes. Tell me, what's your word? What do you want to fulfill this year? Flourish. I love it. Resilience. Joy. What's your word? Let's claim it right now. What do you want to fulfill? Momentum. I love that. Positive, yes, positivity, intentional, hope, yes, hoping for a better future, forward, I love it, I love it, these are all good. And so what I want you to do is take that word you have put in there, put it on a post-it and put it right there, wherever you sit the most. You could also put it on your bathroom mirror, that's what I've done. You can put it in your kitchen on the refrigerator or the microwave. The idea is, and this is a whole different webinar, is the self-fulfilling prophecy. Let's create what we want this year and stop being the victims. All right, I love it. Come on, everybody, keep going. Okay, I'm Joan Birch, founder and CEO of Office Dynamics International. In case you're new, we are the leader in the development and presentation of sophisticated training programs and information for administrative office professionals. And we are going into our 32nd year of doing this. Wow, how exciting, I love it. I'm also the author of five books for administrative professionals, and I'll tell you all a secret. I, I Sometimes I just can't keep things a secret from you, but I'm working on a new book to be released later this year. And it's gonna be one you are going to want to get for your executives. It's going to be directed to them. So that's all I could tell you right now. You're just gonna to have to stay tuned and look for our little sneak peeks into that book. All right, the learning part of the session will be about 40 to 45 minutes, followed by our Q&A. You can submit your questions anytime during the webinar. And there's a little icon down to the right um, that you can put that little icon there so Malia could grab those questions throughout the webinar so we're ready to go. Uh, yay, come on people, yes, keep going, I love it. All right, if you have any technical issues, the only support we can give you is through the chat. So let's do that as well. So what does it mean to be a trailblazer? Um, this actually was a new, program a speech that I was asked to write in November of last year. Um, and it was for a one hour webinar. And I, I really had to think about like, what is a trailblazer? What are the characteristics? And I thought about what did I do as an assistant that I thought I was 
trailblazing, but I also thought about all the assistants I've met over the years and who did I view as a trailblazer and why did I view them and what was the character, what were their characteristics? So I want to, I'm going to approach this first with the characteristics. Let's start there. And as I go through the characteristics, think about yourself. Okay, how would you rate yourself in that area? So when I think of trailblazers, and they could be actually in any industry, you know, you and I could all look at the trailblazers, you know, uh, from Apple and, and all these companies that have been started, right? So first of all, they are relentless. They just do not let up. They are courageous. Definitely courageous is a big piece of being a trailblazer because often when you are a trailblazer, you get knocked down and you're not always popular because you're coming up with ideas that other people haven't thought of. And you might get criticized for some of that. So if you want to be a trailblazer, you've got to develop courage. Idea generator. So the trailblazers I know, they generate new ideas, new approaches, new ways of doing things, or adding a new twist to what they've been doing for years. But they come up with ideas. So think about maybe over a year's time, what percentage of time do you come up with new ideas? And maybe last year you were just trying to get through the year. So this is your year to be that trailblazer. They have a vision. They, they see things that don't exist. You know, and, and I always think about how I was a trailblazer in the administrative training arena. You know, when I started Office Dynamics in 1990, there was no one company dedicated to administrative career training and development. And, and I just had this vision and I don't know how it came to me. I, I think just, you know, as I was shifting from leaving the administrative profession to what do I wanna do next? I just thought about the gap in development for assistants who supported these executives. And so executives were getting all kinds of things. So how do you have vision? You know, does it come naturally to you? I think, though, that we can allow vision to happen if we will free ourselves up from the minutia. If you will just kind of sometimes be quiet um, and, and let things rise up. Another one, oh, passion is huge. So here's what I read about passion with tra trailblazers. Whether motivated by righting a perceived wrong or seeking to change the world for the better, passion is what will keep you motivated and hopefully active. Defined as an intense desire or enthusiasm for something, passion is also what keeps trailblazers up at night and what helps them find the energy to follow through. And I, I can actually relate to this right now because to be honest with you, I was feeling a little disappointed in what where the administrative profession was going last year. The fact that live training was being cut, the fact that assistants were losing their jobs, the fact that some companies were going back to an admin pool. And I had lost some of my energy and just this past week, you know, my, my passion has just, it's been rejuvenated. I'm excited with, because of what I'm writing in this book is sparking my enthusiasm. And then after I got to talk to Sherry and Brenda yesterday, oh my God, and I heard everything that they're doing at their organization and how they're evolving, which by the way, they're going to be um, coming to our live conference in October and they're gonna share that whole story. Anyways, I got excited. So my passion is really, you know, reignited. Of other characteristics, a trailblazer creates their own path. They don't worry about what everyone else thinks. They create a path. So just picture 
a mountains, like we're surrounded by mountains in Las Vegas. So if I'm that trailblazer, I'm going to create a path that doesn't exist, right? So think about this year, where, where can you create your own path where you're not following the crowd, where you're going to shake things up? either within your relationship with your executive or with just getting more excited about, you know, if you're working from home a lot and you can go into the office, get into the office one day or two days a week. Brenda's back in, in the office. Hi, Brenda Mason. <laughs> and, you know, that also could give you some energy changing up your view, changing up where you sit every single day. So, and then we have uh, perseverance for a characteristic. You really have to persevere. And I was thinking this morning, okay, my company is going to be 32 years old this year. And do you know there were at least five to six times where we came close to being devastated by what was going on in the world, whether our economy, whether it was September 11th, whether it was my brain surgery, my husband's cancer. And I, I, just, I just persevere because I so believe in what I'm doing and I don't wanna give it up. So if you're a trailblazer, you keep persevering. You never give up. And then last, I really want you to think about this one. The characteristic is having a level of transparency and vulnerability. If you're gonna be a trailblazer, you it's about being transparent, authentic, real. You're not afraid to speak your truth and what you really believe in. And you're vulnerable because when you step forward with new ideas, there's probably people that are going to try to shoot you down. They're going to say your idea is stupid. Well, that'll never work. Well, that'll never happen. Yeah, well, here I am 32 years later getting companies to train their assistants. Excuse me. So you, I just want to warn you, you're going to be, you need to be vulnerable and okay with the naysayers and not let them get to you and prevent you from creating changes that are good for you or your department or your organization, your career or your industry. So that's the framework. I wanna share with you some examples. How have I really seen this play out? Paula Sandritter, hi. Sorry, I'm looking at all my, I'm so happy to see all my pals coming in. Um, examples of trailblazers is, well, I look at myself, you know, what did I do as an assistant? Um, and so when I was at a few organizations, I created a, an administrative group, uh, administrative networking groups. Um, and later in my career, I started putting together training for assistants that had never been done. That was, a, I was a trailblazer in that respect. When I worked at, I'm thinking still case, um, in the mid eighties in their North Carolina division, I was a trailblazer and then I got my executive to change my title. I worked for the top guy there. We had 900 employees there. I didn't like my title. I don't, I didn't think it worked. So I fought for a title change for that position and salary increase for that position. So, uh, those are a few ideas. I see trailblazers, the assistants who fight to get training in their companies. I have seen it numerous times over the years. I particularly think of my good friend, Julie Reed, who is also one of our trainers now. And I met Julie when she was working at Huntington Bank in Columbus, Ohio for the CEO. For three years, she fought to get our star training into the bank. And she would go back to the drawing board. Her CEO would say no. And a few months later, she'd come back with more ammunition. And she'd come back in a different way. And she'd gather stats. And then we'd have phone calls and she'd go back and he'd say no again. She did this for three years. How many of you would have given up after the first no? And so 
they're still teaching star achievement there because Julie Reed was willing to be that trailblazer. And I see that often. Um, there's assistants who do fight for title changes. There are assistants who are really helping create, you know, the admin role as they want to see it happen. Um, administrative teams. So way back, I used to have an award for administrative teams called the Rising Star Award. And I remember in 1999, uh, Dow Chemical Canada, the assistants, there were 36 assistants up there. They won our award because they saved their company up there, that division, $1 million in 18 months. They put their heads together. They looked in every area of the company and where they could save money and how to cut supplies and all of it. It is possible. You can do it. And then Brenda and Sherry. Yeah, I can know I talk about them. I just talked to them yesterday and they are trailblazers within their organization. So why is it beneficial for you? Why should you take the time? Why should you go through this? Why should you persevere? Wouldn't it just be easier to sit there and just do your job every day? Let me tell you why. So here are the benefits to you. First of all, self-satisfaction is huge. It's huge. When you come up with something, when, when you get that, yes, when you see that you've created a change, whether for yourself or for your organization or your executive, it is so satisfying. And who doesn't want self-satisfaction? You know, I, I would love it every day knowing that I'm doing something that end, at the end of the day, I could say, I did good today. And it fills my soul. Who is Brendan Sherry? Thank you. So Brenda Mason is in a top level, high level executive assistant at Nationwide Insurance. And um, Sherry Veering is also a top level executive assistant at Nationwide. They are part of a huge uh, a professional development committee and they've been working on professional development, I don't know, for over 10 years. So um, maybe you could look them up on LinkedIn and network with them. All right, other benefits to you. You grow new skills, okay? When you're a tracer, trailblazer and you're creating something that hasn't been done before, or again, maybe you're adding a new twist to things you've done for years, um, you're going to grow skills because you haven't done it. You're creating a new path. And so you're probably going to develop problem solving skills and you're going to have to reach out and you're going to have to research, do research. Those are good skills. You're going to grow critical thinking skills, strategic skills. These are all high level skills for you, which, by the way, I want to quickly interject something, uh, you know, and again, sorry, I have a lot to talk to you about today. But if you want to jot this down somewhere, power skills. We're now talking about power skills. So soft skills now are emerging to what the training industry is calling power skills. I also read about power skills in a great, I think it was a blog or an article, um, an APC or ASAP org's website. Um, and so, when you think about soft skills, they're really not soft. They're the skills that give you the power. So you might want to do some research on that. All right, how else do you benefit? And we're going to get to how you do it, but let's go through your benefits. You see what you're really capable of doing. You know, I've been training assistants for 32 years. And when they come into my classes or our classes, I push those assistants to do things they never thought they could do. I know they're uncomfortable. I know it's hard sometimes, even in our virtual classes, we're doing the same thing. But I know when they get through that, they're going to be amazed. They're going to say, oh my gosh, I didn't even think I had that potential. I didn't think I could do that. And you know what that does for them, you know, as individuals? So 
it, it really helps you see these wonderful gifts that you've been given that maybe you're not accessing or maybe they've gotten shoved down the last two years with everything that's happened maybe you were going along really you you were growing you were blossoming and then everything halted well you know what it's time to bloom again you may get a promotion you may get a salary increase when you're a trailblazer you will be recognized as a leader in the workplace you'll gain respect create win-win situations depending on what it is it could lead to a new career you know a lot of assistants who brought in the training into their companies you know our training some of them love training so much that that became a bigger part of their job in addition to being an ea so here and then lastly i'm going to touch on the benefits to your leaders and your organization. So three points. It improves performance, increases productivity, and actually can create a culture change. So let's get to it. How? How do you be a trailblazer? How do you execute? Whether you are in a hybrid environment, whether you work from home full time, whether you're in the office full time, I would tell you the same thing. It isn't that, oh, because you're hybrid, you have your set of rules and you work in the office and here's your set of rules. No, it's going to be the same. I don't care where you're working. Remember, it's the set of characteristics we have, not necessarily a place. Now, obviously, if you're working from home a lot, you've got to do more work because you've got to be visible. But first of all, here's what you have to do. You have to come up with new things, new ways of doing things. Trailblazers aren't just, you know, tweaking a little something here or there. They're, they're doing something that moves the ball. Um, so it's hard, right? It's hard for me to teach you this because I can't teach you how to create something out of nothing. I can only tell you, oh, the three benefits. Yeah, sorry, Rebecca. Let me go back up a minute. The benefits to your organization, improved performance, increased productivity, and you can create a cultural change. You can actually impact your culture. So uh, the new ideas, let's go back to this. So it, it's a little hard, but what you have to do to create something new is you've got to kind of take your blinders off. Don't just see what's here in front of you or what you're reading or what you're looking at. It's more of, as you look at your world around you, as you look at your work, as you listen to what people are saying, as you read and see what are the trends, you know, what's going on out there in the business world, in our workplaces, what are trends that are happening? Those help, they can help trigger an idea. So you need new triggers. We can't look at the same old stuff and 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 expect that we're going to create something new we can look at it but we have to say hmm what does this mean what can i do with this how can i make this better it's also what i've said many many times look at your day approach your day with a question mark not what something is what could this mean what could i build off of this what could i create that's going to run the business new smoother I think I just saw, let's see, Judy is here talking about, we have always had an operational manual for our agency, but not one for our specific program. And I have developed one that is just for that specific program. So you do see, it's like, okay, I, I saw this over here, but you know what, now I'm gonna do this with it. Therefore, you have to pay attention. The other part is, you know, really listening to your leaders, 
what you know what are they reading what are they hearing what are they saying what's your company talking about now you might say well it's all just kind of business industry stuff but that can be a trigger do you see so don't don't shut your mind off for, from anything uh you might be as you're going through one of these webinars something i say might like get you to think like oh wow yeah i need to do that or maybe something you read in the chat or if you're on a facebook group like if you go to our office dynamics our uh, administrative access facebook group they've got so many ideas popping in there that you might see something in there that you never thought of and you can really make it work for you or your organization it's I, I'm very excited about it because this is exciting stuff. This is what keeps you motivated about your job and your career and why you get up every single day. Um, and then part of that whole piece of the new, you can find innovative ways to streamline processes. So three, I think this will be our third year. I'm not sure, but I created the Joan Burge Innovation Award, which we give at our in-person conference um, in the fall. And so assistants submit, you know, essays on where they thought they were innovative. And then we obviously present, we, we figure out who deserves that award, who we thought was the most innovative. They're all great ideas. I shouldn't say who deserves it. They're all so good, it's hard. But they, those were assistants who streamline processes. There was one assistant the first year of our award where her and her executive came up with a platform for executives and assistants to communicate. It's Emory, E-M-M-R-E. They were the first I knew of to create this platform where just an executive and assistant communicate with each other. And, and there's other kinds of tools. Now there's another great pro platform out there called BASE, B-A-S-E. And they've also created something where for you, it's more for you, to really do a mind dump and collect everything and then prioritize and organize and so forth. So you might check those two out, but those are examples. Some other examples um, of what you could do is create a strategic partnership with the leader you support the most. So if you don't have that, you know, that's how you're a trailblazer. You're not going to have a part, a typical team, executive team, executive relationship. You're going to be like, no, I want a strategic partnership. And this is what it looks like. And this is what we're going to do. And this is how we're going to build it. Do you see you then become a trailblazer on how other executives and assistants should work in partnership? That's a big one. You can become an advocate for your leader. You know, be that advocate. What are their goals? What are their mission? Uh, what is their mission? What are their values? And how could you advocate for them? And imagine what that will do in terms of how they view you and your credibility and your the level of respect they'll have for you. Grow your position or your role. You know, how many of you have feel like you've been stagnant the past year or two years that it's just kind of been vanilla? OK, grow it. Figure out what do you how do you want to grow yourself? How do you want to grow your role? You do not have to live in this box. And I feel that's what's happened to a lot of people, not just assistants from working from home. They're just in this place of complacency enough enough with two years of complacency let's move our world forward let's move this profession forward let's evolve and create what we want for you so you have a better future you have a career that you love which by the way in february we're going to do a great webinar with debbie gross about loving your career and how do you create a career you will love 
and and I know I'm getting off here because I'm thinking of so many things right now, but I just thought of Betty White because she recently passed away and she worked well into her 90s and I loved it that she said, why would I stop? I love my work. I love it. And I'm so happy my agent keeps me busy and I am doing things and I need it and I'm alive and I'm vibrant. Wouldn't you love to have that instead of God? I can't wait till I retire because I dread every day I come in or my job is boring. I wouldn't want that. And in retirement, it's not even in my vocabulary. All right, let's go on. Another example of what you could do is show a passion for the profession and educate others. Be the walking billboards in your company. Educate people about what your role really is. And the book that I'm working on, which by the way, I'm working on the book with an executive who is a, is a business owner, brilliant gentleman who's 37 years old. And we're going to, we're going to show both generations, right? And part of it is we want to educate executives on what an EA truly does, what their real value is and how they show up in times of crisis and how they're there by your side. So tell people about what you do, be proud of it. All right, now we're gonna get into risk taking and then we're gonna get to execution and I'm watching the time so we could take your, um, your questions. So first of all, being a trailblazer involves risk and you have to be a bit of a risk taker. So I found this great piece. Um, it's called Eight Different Types of Risk Takers. And uh, it's from the British psychologist, Jeff, G-E-O-F-F, -F, Tricky, T-R-I-C-K-E-Y. And he said, risk takers, we tend to fall into one of eight varieties. So I'm going to just touch on each one. Identify where you think you fall. I know my top. I know mine. I start them. Okay. I know them immediately when I read it. So first of all, we have the wary risk taker. And if you want to pop in the chat and let us know, hey, that's me. Okay. These types of risk takers are cautious, vigilant, and pessimistic. So they don't take a lot of risk. They're more of what could go wrong. You know, this isn't going to work. Prudent risk takers. These people favor predictability and continuity. So their approach is a more careful approach. They're conservative, you know, when it comes to taking risks. All right, this is me. This is one of my three, intense. <laughs> They're characterized by being very passionate, <laughs> high levels of enthusiasm, um, but however, we're very self-critical. Uh, so anyways, I know that's me. Um, deliberate. So deliberate risk takers, they, let's see, their approach towards risks is governed more by their needs or their heads, sorry, than their hearts. So they're logically looking at something and therefore they have a more systematic and balanced approach to taking a risk. Spontaneous people, uh, they have average risk tolerance. They're more reactive and expressive. So where are you? I'm looking in the chat and I've got to scroll down because I'm trying to see where you are. Um, okay, composed risk takers. They're task oriented, resilient, usually not very reckless <laughs> carefree this was my one of my top so this was above my intense they're free thinkers 
Uh, this group also enjoys challenging the status quo. I love challenging the status quo. Uh, even in my personal life, um, they, they frequently break new ground. So is that you? And then the last group, which I starred this, gave myself three stars, adventurous. Um, these people are positive, upbeat. They're, they're more bold. And it says they boldly go where no man has gone before. So which one is you? And I think if you understand where you are, you'll understand that how willing you're you're how willing you are to be a trailblazer in new territory so if you are a more cautious risk taker how can you up that this year how can you build that confidence to take more risks and those risks could be having courageous conversations with your executive you know um so I hope that helps you. Now, also, when you're taking a risk with being a trailblazer, you've got to weigh the pros and the cons. If I do this, if I if I promote this process, you know, what are the pros and cons? Now, I'll also tell you, just because your con list is longer than your pro list, it doesn't mean don't do it because my pro could be so big, it overwhelms my four cons. So you go by the weight, not the number. And this is the same thing when you're doing problem solving, when you're working through problems at work and you're trying to come up with new ideas and solutions, you look at the weight of the pros and the cons. All right, let me keep moving. So what do you need to do? Here we go as well. Number, there are seven. Are you ready? So first of all, you have to have an idea of what you want to change or create. And beginning a new year is a great time. What do you want to see happen this year? What do you not want to accept anymore? In, you know, as far as your job and your career, and what do you want to change? What do you want to stop doing? What do you want to start doing? What do you want to create? You've got to have that seed planted. And, and I think like by establishing a word for yourself this year, that might help you. And then within that, keep your eyes and your ears open, because like I said, then you may see something that triggers it. And, and I think attending our monthly free webinars, we have a lot of cool new stuff going on this year for you. And so if you jump in on that, even if you're on 10 minutes, in that 10 minutes, you might hear the one thing that could change your life. It doesn't have to be an hour. Um, Number two, you want to gather all your information. Okay, it's, it's not just, woo, okay, do your research, get the facts from credible sources. There are a lot of sources out there, and we have a lot of resources that aren't necessarily credible. So when you've got that idea, or if it's something, again, within your company, um, Paula, that thank you, Paula. Sam Ritter, yes. If you can't join, watch the replay. Thank you, Paula. Now, let's see, I have an exception in here. So while you're going to gather your information, right? I'm saying gather information, get all your facts, go to credible sources. If you're creating something that's never been done, um, so like I started a group when I was a secretary at a big bank and it was called the Star Achievers Group. And then I started, when we moved to Virginia Beach, I started an external group called the Star Achievers Group, which was for executive assistants who worked in different companies, but you had to work for a CEO. Do you see it had never been done? So I was kind of, I was creating something out of nothing basically but I had my ideas, I had my thoughts, 
but you could also mirror who else is doing that, but maybe in a different industry where you could kind of see what they've done, how they've done it and pull from that. Number three, determine how you will present this information, whether to your boss, to an administrative team, to management. Um, you really got to think about your audience and how you're going to present it so it has impact. I just thought of something really quick. I know I'm, I'm just, ah, these ideas are flowing today. But talk about a trailblazer or or having impact. Brenda Mason was sharing with me yesterday. You know, I talk about human moments all the time and creating human moments and not just using technology. And so Brenda was telling me a little story where she had to get a meeting coordinated with an, an external CEO with her executive. And she knew the, the CEO very well, but they were going back and forth kind of, I guess, in emails with dates. And she finally wrote him and said, hey, let's have a human moment. Let's pick up the phone instead of going back and forth with emails. That, that little thing tells me you're a trailblazer. I'm not going to accept going back in emails 10 times. Get on the phone and let's talk or get on Zoom and let's talk. Um. So how you want to present the information in writing, do you need it uh, to be able to express it and communicate it and put it in writing? Do you need to create a PowerPoint presentation? Take into consideration the receiver's communication styles. How do they like to receive information? Are they factual? Are they visual? You know, all of those things because you want to, you want them to pay attention to you. You want them to listen to your idea and not shut you down at the first sentence out of your mouth. Number four, you need a plan for influencing or persuading. We teach persuasion skills in our world-class assistant course. I've been teaching them for years. Most assistants do not see themselves as salespeople. They'll because they'll tell me, well, I, I asked for this or I asked for that or I wanted support for this. or I wanted support for that or I may, suggested this idea and my executive said, no, I guess that's it. No, if you're going to be a trailblazer, you have to be persuasive. You have to know how to influence. So on that note, um. What I wanted to say is add to your skills. I see one of the power skills is being persuasive. So put that on your learning this year. Put persuasiveness down. As far as influence goes, we just enlisted a great speaker from Canada who is going to talk about influence at our conference. She's showing up in person, Sheila Donnelly. She's amazing. She's going to talk about you know, influence and persuasion and your executive presence. But in the meantime, learn on your own. You don't have to wait all the way till October <laughs> and come to conference. Number five, have the courageous conversation. Remember early on, I said, if you're going to be a trailblazer, it takes courage and sometimes it's a lonely path. If you're advocating for yourself, I want a salary increase or I want a job title change or I want my job to be more exciting and interesting. That's a lonely path. It's me, right? I've got to have the, the conversation with somebody <laughs> Or again, maybe you're trying to convince your administrative peers to huddle. I thought um, I heard something brilliant yesterday from Sherry Veering. She works for a very high, high level executive and nationwide. She says for every meeting, the assistants get on a phone call and talk it through. So they actually have a meeting to schedule the meeting. She said, we don't go back and forth with emails and try to figure out calendars. 
you know so that to me that's that's pretty courageous to say hey executive assistants we're not going to email back and forth anymore 10 times and try to figure out dates we're all going to get on either you know my virtual platform or pick up the phone and we're going to hash this out and get it done now in 10 minutes that's a courageous conversation to have with your peers um and so another heads up i want to tell you we're going to be doing a webinar on flip the script we're flipping the way the script was for years with assistants we're flipping it we're not going to say the things we used to say we're going to flip it and we're going to evolve and we're going to make this better number six assess the outcomes of those conversations so what worked well what didn't work like again going back to julie reed if her executive said no what worked what went well what didn't work well what am i missing that my executive needs to hear so i can convince them you assess it and you figure out what can i do better next time what can i do differently and as you do that you're going to grow skills within yourself with which when you grow skills you are more marketable the more you fill your bag with skills you can call the shots you can take yourself anywhere but you have to always add to your bag of skills every single day and then number seven, the last one, and then I know I'm like way over here, I've got to give you, yes, why did the executive say no? Michelle, I didn't know if you were saying, find out why they said no, I think is what you're trying to tell us. All right, number seven, work around the barriers. Remember, I said trailblazers persevere. I see barriers as just a detour sign. You know, look, you have a choice whether you're setting your personal goals, whatever you're doing, you have a choice that when that detour sign pops up, you can pick up your marbles and go home and give up, or you could find a different route, work around the barrier. It just says detour. It doesn't mean stop. Get that in your head. Don't You don't have to stop learn to work it work around the barriers um some other things let's see obviously if you're presenting new ideas yeah you you're going to maybe get that know at first from your executive but also know that executives need to massage an idea i will often say to my team when they give me a new idea no right away even from my creative director but then it's just I need time to think about it and digest it. And so when I have my quiet time at night or at home or on an airplane, a lot of times I come back and say, yeah, let's try it. So um, some of the things your, your executive, you know, may not be open to your idea. Maybe your administrative team isn't open to your idea. Maybe HR isn't open to it. Uh, sorry, is everyone trying to to catch up. I know I'm going really fast because I want to get to your questions. So um, play the replay link, but really quickly, number one, you have to have the idea or know what you want. Number two, gather your information. Number three, how are you going to present it? Number four, have a plan for influencing. Then you've got to have number five, the courageous conversation. After that, you go to number six, assess your outcome. And then number seven, if you've gotten barriers put up, work around the barrier. So I hope that helps you. So how do you work around the barriers? <laughs> Rethink your information. There are times I, I thought I had all the information and I made a great decision. One time I made a $25,000 decision that I thought business-wise was a great decision based on all these facts I have and it didn't turn out anything like I thought. That's a big investment, right? 
So it, go back, even though I have all this information, go back, maybe what was missing. Can you gather more facts? Maybe you need to present the information differently. Is it the right time? Maybe it's just not the right time, right? Um, Janice, bye, you have to sign off, come back and next month. So, and then bottom line, you have to believe 100% in what you're doing. Like if I'm only 50%, like, well, it would really be nice if we could, you know, have a daily huddle, Ms. Executive. Versus we need to have a daily huddle. And here's why we need to have that a huddle. And we're only going to do it for five or 10 minutes. And here's the benefit. Do you see? I'm 100% convinced. So get 100% convinced that based on what you know right now, this is what you want to see happen. Knowing you might have to add things down the road. Okay, really quick, let's do some questions, Malia, and then everybody really quick too, because some of you have to head off. I just want to be sure to tell you right now, we still have early bird pricing for our world-class assistant starts, whoops, February. First with Lisa Olson, she's amazing. Uh, the Star Achievement Series, I'm going to start teaching level one and level two, February 2nd. We still have early bird for our annual conference. Um, and we also have some new exciting things for you this year. We're gonna be trailblazers this year. We've got some cool stuff for Administrative Professionals Month. And ooh, I'm bursting. We're going to do a special virtual event for all of you in early summer. So just keep checking your inboxes. Okay, let's do questions, Malia. Okay. All right. So from Amy, what power skills do you feel are most important to develop during, sorry, develop now during these ever-changing times? Excellent question. And I do have some facts for you because of the article I read and then uh, some other stuff in my own thoughts. But collaboration is a power skill. Always communication, because we need to get better and better with that and be more powerful and having more human moments, as I call them, with people, especially in the environments that we're in. Um, another power skill was resiliency. We've got to keep being resilient, you know, and getting stronger. Um, another power skill, I'm trying to think of the article that I read. Oh, critical thinking decision making so and a lot of the skills we teach are also power skills emotional intelligence is also a really good skill to uh, up level you know this year because as we're going through these constant changes and we're evolving we've got to be thinking of those four dimensions of you know emotional intelligence which is i know me i manage me this dimension two number three um, I get to know you. And number four, I can be the visionary and the leader. Michelle's got self-awareness. Yep. Okay, next question. Okay, and Denise kind of piggybacking off of that. How do you do a self-assessment of your power skills? So a good way, and it's the way we, I've done it four years with executives and assistants. It's really a method we use with training too. So where you, you put together maybe those 10 top power skills um, and um, you would rate yourself like resiliency. It, it's how effective am I? Not am I good at it or not good at it? On a scale of one to five, where are you? Or you could do percentages, you know, like I'm 50% of the time I'm resilient, okay? So the best way to do it is do your own where you think you are, but it's really important to get your executives input or the people you support. It's getting that what we call the 360 degree feedback. I might think I'm really good at something, but the people who work with me all the time say, you're really not that resilient, Joan. Maybe, you know, 
20% of the time or, oh, it could be better. They could say, oh, no, you know, we think you're like an 80 out of 100 or a four out of five with resiliency. You can also go really quickly. I've got to think about where it is and maybe Brian can send it in the follow up on our website. We have the administrative um, competency assessment tool. It's four pages. That's a tool that I've created through research too for executives to rate their assistants on how well they do in these 15 core competency areas, which are the power skills, and also an assistant does. And then from there, we design a development plan. So um, I don't know who knows. Um, I don't know, Malia, I guess Brian could send that in the replay link um, because, you know, that's- I'm, I'm adding it into the chat right now. I'll put a link in. Because that's a tool, like I said, we have used, it's research designed, um, and it's always being updated when necessary, but it's it works really well. So you could use that assessment as a starting point. Brian just put the link in the chat so okay, everybody thanks, can Brian. see that. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, were you done, John? <laughs> no, I, I mean, you know, when we talk about the power skills, I've been teaching them for 32 years. You know, it, it's just funny to me how these things come out, you know, um, and they, but it's just, they were always referred to the soft skills, but the power skills are the persuasion skills, leadership skills, self-management, problem solving skills, presentation skills, because here, here's what it means power skill. It means when you are equal to assistance in other areas, you all know Excel, you know Word, you know how to use this particular app. What gives you the extra power? Where do you stand out? What's your differentiator? That's the question you have to answer. And it's the power skill. It's the soft skill. I'm a great communicator. I know how to influence. I know how to persuade. I know how to manage conflict. Those are power skills. I'm a leader. Do you see? Those are the things that have not gone away in 32 years, actually, probably hundreds of years. Dale Carnegie talked about power skills how many years ago? How many years he's gone, his company's still on fire. So you could also look, look to leadership training, Google leadership training, leadership classes, whatever leaders are learning you need to learn. Those are power skills, how to be strategic. And I'm sorry, I could go, you could tell I'm pumped about it because it, it is so cool when you develop these power skills, you have no idea how your world will change personally and professionally. <laughs> That's my two cents. You can tell, <laughs> we haven't done a webinar for a while and I'm already fresh for the future. <laughs> so look out, 2022. Just as a side note, she's been like this all morning. <laughs> <laughs> and I promise it's not the two cups of coffee. I woke up inspired today. <laughs> okay, well, let's do another question. Well, okay, Marlene would like to know, how do you identify pain points and provide a solution for an executive? She mm -hmm. says this was a suggestion as part of standing out in interviews and writing your resume. I love this. You, how do you identify? I'm writing this down because this how do you mind. identify pain points and provide a solution for an executive? So I'll tell you what I would do. Maybe Melina, Melina, Malia has. <laughs> I'm sure Malia could tell you how she knows my pain points. She hears me vocalize them. This morning I had a pain point. I almost had a <laughs> meltdown because I was working on my my book. And all these ideas were flowing and flowing and flowing. And I'm like, I can't get about fast enough. And all of a sudden, everything went funky in my document. And Malia knows that was my pain point, right? Because I'm, help, Malia, get in here. <laughs> 
So I think how I used to know pain points and how I, I listen to executives now who hire me for coaching, you listen, like you listen throughout the day. Are there, is there anything they're saying like, oh, I'm so frustrated with this or, oh, I just can't tolerate this anymore. Or this takes up so much of my time. You know, listen to what they say. Um, that's how you know any a person's pain point, right? Also read, like you looking through the emails, is there anything you pick up on where they're showing frustration with a direct report? Um, maybe they're a pain point, you know, for a lot of executives, they just have, they just have so much on their plate and, and they get tired of making decisions. That's a pretty com common pain point for all executives. And, uh, so if you could take decision-making off their plate, but anyway, listen, if you listen, then you can make then you could provide some solutions from that. If they say, so here's the, another pain point. Years ago, an executive, we did an assessment of how many emails were coming in for that executive because that bothered him. So when we saw the pain points of how many he was getting, who were they from, what were, which were external, what were internal, then we could come up with solutions. You know, And the solution is you've got to cut these emails as the assistant by 20%. Now, how are we going to do that? Um, Malia, what other ways, like do you pick up on my pain points? I'm very expressive, so I don't think it's hard. <laughs> but if I think it's about- not, It's not hard, but I think one thing to look for too sometimes is change in demeanor or attitude. Um, Joan's typically very peppy when she walks in the door. So if she happens not to be, then Obviously, there's something going on and I might go to her and say, what can I do to help? Or is there something I could take from you to do this, you know, to help you get through your day? So, um, but I think I think watching for, you know, visual um, notes also, you know. That's a really good one. And I, <laughs> I was just thinking about this one minute. <laughs> executive I worked for, he owned his own business. We were in Asheville, North Carolina, and it was a smaller company. It had blinds in his office like I do, right? His name was Bill. I knew he was not happy when he closed his blinds because they were always open. But I could tell something was bothering him with business or an employer or whatever, because he would close the blinds. <laughs> now, obviously, if you're not in the office, you don't see that. But I think, yes, like Malia said, if your executive typically is one way and they've changed, they're changing a behavior or they're not clear thinking or whatever, then you can maybe ask, you know, what's on your mind. Um, and another, another thing I thought too, one assistant said that every day she asked her executive, what fires can I help you put out today? What are your top three goals you want to accomplish? You could also say, what's your pain point right now? Because my pain yeah. point might be like, right now, I have three things with deadlines today. That's a pain point for me. I've got to move fast. I've got to have these things done. No ifs, ends, and buts about it. So if Malia recognizes that, she is going to kind of, you know, be over there fielding things or taking care of things. So I have the quiet time. And, and sometimes it's as easy as reminding her to drink some water or have a snack or eat her lunch. Yeah. <laughs> because you do get you do get very involved in things and you might, you know, your executive might forget to take care of themselves and then they're not going to make it through the day very well. Well, that's a good point, too. Mm -hmm. So that that could be like a pain point, I guess, without them realizing it is if they get fatigued or tired, right. then they're not going to be pro productive or they're not going to think with clarity. So um, I'm just looking at some of the comments of some other ideas. So uh, I know says, we're eat a Snickers. <laughs> um reviewing the agenda so that that's a great idea and that's where like when you have the daily huddles where when you talk about what's going on and what needs to be done there's a lot of times you could pick up on the pain point during that huddle so if you're working remotely 
try to have a five minute touch base in the morning. And by knowing what's on their agenda for the day or the week, you might figure what that pain point is. And maybe sometimes they don't even know it, but you can point it out. You can say, I imagine you're feeling overwhelmed right now, Joan. You have three deadlines, three, three different deadlines today. I imagine you're feeling a little overwhelmed. Yeah, you know what? I really am, Malia. So, um, and then we could figure it out together. Rebecca so, commented uh, with a little question. What if your executive is unpredictable? That I have to say that is very difficult because the predictability is they're unpredictable. Right. <laughs> and, and it is, it's true. I, you know, I knew someone very well who there, the predictability was I never knew what they were going to throw at me or how they were going to act. And one time it was this way and one time it was that way. It makes it extremely hard to maneuver. And I would say maybe it's more just being in the moment with where they are in that moment and try to pick up on what what is in the moment right now going on because it could change tomorrow right, right. so i guess we better go or sit, change know. jobs yeah mary change jobs leave that person <laughs> i don't i don't know if you have a second to answer this one or not john go ahead. i do get this question fairly oh, often oh i i got all kinds of, no i don't have all <laughs> time actually but. and i don't know how long it's i mean this is this no is go time. ahead office dynamics um Yes. Vincent's asking what you if you suggest somebody to take world class first or star achievement. Oh, and good that's a golly. question I get very oh, often. That was quick. <laughs> that's a, a tough question. You know, we're often asked. I would say star covers the whole gamut. The whole gamut. Level one and two addresses about 40 competencies you need to be successful. And it's a progressive program. It starts out with the foundation like a college course and it grows in complexity. It's very strategic and intentional of how I have built it. And you're laying a foundation and you build and build and you go deeper and it gets more complex. So if you want that full, full picture, of what you need at STAR. World class is a shorter course, not as time consuming. It, it, it's only strategically designed in that there's just different topics that are timely and will help you be world class, like building a strategic partnership. And then we talk about a lot on communications and generational communication, and we teach resiliency. So it's different pockets. So, and it's less time, STAR is a big, bigger commitment. You do get a designation. You can get a designation with both of those courses. So, all right, wow, we've been on a marathon today. We love you all and we want, we want to be your partner this year, okay? So stay with us, stay tuned. We're going to be trailblazers this year. And we want you to be on that path with us. So everyone, happy new year. Have an awesome January and I'll see you in February. Bye. Bye. Thank you.